All right. Hello, ladies. <laughs> Woo! All right. To get this video up was we're here. We're here finally. Okay. So, um, welcome back to our designers. Welcome back to my channel. Um, this channel is all about motherhood inspiration, beauty, lifestyle, and self-care tips. So, um, please do subscribe. Subscribe. Hit the bell button so that you can get a notification every time a new video comes out. Because you don't want to miss. You don't want to miss. <laughs> you don't want to miss it. So, um, hit the bell button. Subscribe. Like. Share. Because sharing is caring, right? So, yeah. Um, anyway, so for the month of August, I am focusing primarily on breastfeeding. Breastfeeding for the is a national uh, is a national breastfeeding month for the entire of August. So I'm giving you guys some videos, some tips, some bits, just geared to breastfeeding and to cater to that topic. Now, um, with that being said, uh, I guess a little bit about me. It, it would help, I guess, is that I do have two children. Both of them, I did breastfeed them to 13 months. I did do exclusive, and then I now switched over to transitional formulas uh, now that they're not breastfeeding so um we were able to work it out that way but um so i along the way of the two children I was able to pick up on some tips and tricks that helped me in my breastfeeding journey now let's jump right into it shall we <laughs> all right okay so um just to kind of get it started i do want to let you know that Key tip, big tip is every woman's breastfeeding journey is different. Now, with that being said, it is it's going to look different for every woman, okay? You might find a woman that you that kind of is similar to you, but they're still going to be different. Um, there are going to be some women that want to breastfeed and formula feed or exclusively pump um, or exclusively put the baby onto the breast or a mixture of both, or a mixture of all three. It's it, breastfeeding is so is so diverse. So, um, number one tip is do not feel pressured to do it one way. If you cannot, you know, get one way down, then let's try the next way. As long as your mission is to breastfeed your child for however long that you can. Um, if you want to do it only six months, great. One year, fine. <laughs> you know, two years great it's okay what it's kind of what you deciding what your body will allow you to do and what you're mentally and physically able to do or even want to do um now with mine i stopped at 13 months because i was tired <laughs> i was tired and by that time i was like okay it's time for me to you know get my groove back so it was it was definitely time to say all right kiddos we've had a good one you know it's been it's been real for the last 13 months okay <laughs> so but um i just wanted to start off with that because whenever you do tend to compare your journey with somebody else's journey sometimes it can feel encouraging sometimes it can be discouraging so do just know that your journey is very particular to you okay but these tips that i'm going to talk about is going to help you no matter what style you want to breastfeed and uh no matter how your journey looks these tips are going to are going to help you out so do stay tuned to the end of this video there is one tip that ties everything i'm saying together and that was a game changer for me and actually preventing me from throwing in the towel on for one of my children <laughs> if not for this method i would have said well i'm done so this one is going to say is I'm, I'm going to say is breastfeeding is a demand and supply it's all a, the more you demand the more your body is going to supply that is normally how um, breastfeeding is kind of going to take its place and how it's going to um, kick off for you. With that being said, when you are in the hospital or you, whatever environment that you choose to give birth to your child, you do want to keep in mind that you have access to lactation specialists. Now, if you're in an area where you don't have lactation or you don't have access to lactation spe specialists, I'm going to leave some links down below where you can have access to lactation specialists. Okay, so this I'm going to leave links and, and we're not going to leave any we're, no woman left behind. No mother is going to be left behind. Okay, so 
if you're in a hospital setting, you 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 have access to lactation specialists about 95% of times. Ask. A lot of moms don't know to ask. Sometimes the lactation specialist, they're not there's not enough on each floor. So by the time maybe you get in and you're discharged and you leave, you can probably go without seeing one, right? I like to call them lactation angels and because they they really are, but it's good to um it's good to know that you have access to lactation specialists. Take full advantage of that. Um, we know that those hospital bills are not cheap. <laughs> those hospital bills will get you every time. So take full advantage. You're already paying for it. It's there for you. Take full advantage of lactation specialists. And if you're not in a setting where there are some, don't worry, I'm gonna leave some links down for you below, okay? The general tip is going to be making, uh, knowing how many times a newborn is supposed to feed, okay? So we know that newborns are gonna feed about anywhere from eight to 12 times in a day. When you know that a newborn is supposed to feed a certain amount of times in a day, when you see the baby keep coming to your breast or wanting more food, you're not gonna be shocked and you're not gonna feel like, okay, maybe I'm not doing enough. Maybe something's wrong with me. Meanwhile, nothing's nothing's wrong. It's just that's how much they're supposed to eat. So in my prior video, if you haven't watched that already, please do click. I'm going to leave that link also in the bio. Please do click on that and watch the um, eight essential things that you do need to kind of jumpstart your breastfeeding journey. But in that video, I do mention that having some education about breastfeeding is key. Meanwhile, because it's going to the more you know, the more you're going to be prepared. So ch children, the babies, they're going to eat anywhere from eight to 12 times um, in a in a 24 hour period. You do choose to put your baby onto breast. You want to make sure that you have a good latch. Um, if I did not tie this in, but the when you are in a, in the in the place that you choose to give birth to, a lactation specialist is going to come in and make sure you have a good latch. You do not want to leave that hospital without a good latch. You want to make sure that your baby has fully latched to the breast if that's the method that you choose to go with. Um, reason why being is because once you get home, it's 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 um it, you throw it out into the woods right now, you know, and so it's kind of like okay, I'm home and baby's crying and there's a lot going on and you mom, you're trying to heal and it's just one less thing you have to worry about. So before you leave the hospital, establish a plan, whether you plan to exclusively pump or ex ex uh, put the baby onto the breast or do a combination of both, have a good idea and have lactation specialists. They do not have to come in your room one time. They can come in as many times as you're calling them to come in. For me, I did, um, with my daughter, she has a smaller mouth. Um, so I was trying to make sure that she was gripping on very well. So every time I would feed, I would call the lactation specialist can you come look at this? <laughs> they probably knew my name very well, but hey, I would rather have that than go home and, and just be and just struggle, you know, with trying to get um, baby latched on. So key is before you leave the your birthing place, your place of birth, do get your baby latched. This can also, what this can also do is if your baby tends or is born with any form of like tongue tie, they can catch this because usually the pediatrician does visit children before they are discharged sometimes, not all the time, but at least a lactation specialist can maybe see, hmm, because something is not right here because everything is looking good and maybe somebody can catch that, ah, the baby has a tongue tie and it's going to prevent him from really latching and then you guys can get that taken care of you know with the help of your pediatrician so do take full advantage of your lactation angels all right this now takes me into prenatal vitamins and vitamin d do make sure you're taking your vitamin d your vit your prenatals you want to make sure that your body is has the what it needs to succeed, what it needs to nourish yourself and your child. So continue to take your prenatals unless otherwise stated by your provider. 
Um, now your prenatals, that kind of depends on, you know, you are taking whatever prenatals you're taking when you are giving, when you're pregnant, talk to your provider about it. And it's okay for you to continue taking it post delivery. Please do. All right. That takes me right into cluster feedings. So cluster feedings are feedings where your baby, they usually last about two days. Um, and it's usually when your child is going through a growth spurt. Okay, so when your child is going through a growth spurt, they're going to be eating every 30 minutes on it to an hour. I kid you not. And at that time, if you have never read about cluster feedings, that is going to be the time more than likely you will throw in the towel because you are just like head over heels and you're wondering, is this baby, is anything coming out? <laughs> Is anything coming out of here because this baby is eating every 30 minutes and it's, it's just like you're just sitting with the baby either like this or with a pump it's it's like non-stop it, it's non-stop so and but this usually lasts for about three days and this happens when the baby is going through a growth spurt so you know that during this time it's just it is what it is you know <laughs> you're gonna just kind of rock with it and you know that the baby is feeding every 30 minutes every hour because they're going through a growth spurt now if this growth spurt lasts more than seven days you might want to reach out to your provider okay um but more a lot of times during i've seen moms during this time they will kind of give up or they or maybe a family member might tell them that you know the baby's eating so much are you sure you don't want to give them something else because are you sure anything is coming out but if you have that knowledge that you know when cluster feedings happen you know what to expect during cluster feedings you're gonna tackle this and trust me when you get through a cluster feeding i mean the rest is you know it, it's getting through those cluster feedings and this is going to happen at various times in your child's development mean that you know cluster feedings and when you're going through your breastfeeding journey in general i hate to say this but you're gonna need an extra 500 calories an extra five extra 500 calories um now I know when we have our babies, we're ready to kind of, you know, get snatched back again, right? We want, we, we, we've been tired of looking at the round belly and the, and the bubble butt, you know, we're all kind of like, okay, let's, let's kind of trim down. It, it's time. But if you do choose to nurse your child, just know extra 500 calories is going to it might make you gain a little bit of weight. Now, it's not bad weight. You're still gonna be beautiful, you know, but it's gonna be it's gonna be a nursing mother's weight. You know, that weight that somebody will know that, okay, she's nursing a child right now. So do know that you're you might now some women their body um loses a lot of weight when they're nursing. For others, and I fall into that other cat other category, body just hangs on. It just holds on to, to as much fat as possible. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so funny. So do know that adding an extra 500 calories um, is, it might make you gain a little bit of weight. And, um, but it's okay. Once you're done breastfeeding, trust me, girl, the weight is going to start going down and you can hit the gym and, you know, do your workouts. But um, do keep in mind that 500 calories is necessary. All right. What does 500 calories look like? 500 calories is going to look like an extra snack in the afternoon and in the evening. Most times when you get those two extra snacks, that's going to hit your 500 calorie mark, especially if you're eating a well-rounded meal. Now, I want to get into certain foods that increase milk supply. Okay, so foods that increase milk supply is definitely... You're gonna have your custards, you're gonna have your oatmeals, your salmons, your leafy green vegetables, your potatoes, um, your brewer's yeast. Brewer's yeast is more like a, it's like a nutritional yeast, like a vegetarian yeast, kind of bitter, but, <laughs> but it does the trick. I remember the night I found out about nutritional yeast, um, I went to one of my friends place and she has she has two daughters and um she was nursing her child at the time and she told me about brewer's yeast and that was a life changer for me like i was i mean milk was just 
yeah i it, it put me in almost oversupply so brewer's yeast is like is, is a really nice key ingredient in a lot of um uh, snacks or you can sprinkle on your food that actually gets your breast milk going a thousand miles another one is going to be mother's milk teas um apricots uh, hot soups in my culture we have a lot of hot soups that are geared to new moms and getting like milk production flowing but um, no matter what culture that you are in any type of hot delicious soup that you know of chicken noodle soup any hot watery soup is going to get that milk flowing and it's going to increase the milk supply okay so um those are some foods you you can rewind this video write those down if you're a new mom write those down because it's going to help you trust me it's going to help you and and just have those like stashed in your pantry so like if you hit like a dip you you're like you're covered okay so you alternate between all these foods don't eat too much of any you know too don't eat too much of it too much of anything is not going to be good right so just alternate between these foods and have fun but make sure that each of your meals are really nutrition based they have a lot of nutrition in it you're going to even see a um if you if you decide to pump you're going to actually see a difference in your milk your milk is going to look different it's going to look thicker it's going to look wider it's going to look more nutrition it's not going to be too watery um now it's okay to have watery milk and like the four milk what they call in the beginning but when you, you you'll see a difference when you're eating really healthy nutrition have a lot of nutrition in it um you're gonna really see your breast milk look very it's gonna change it's gonna be thick and and just it's gonna look Quite different but that's good it's gonna that's what gets the baby really chubby and, and gives them those cute baby rolls that we all love so um do make sure that each meal you're being mindful and just um making sure that each one carries a lot of healthy nice nutrition in it okay and don't skip out on the calories this is not the time to go on your 1500 calorie diet or your intermittent fasting or beach diets all that is going to do is just make your body just is going to wear you out. So do, I, I know, I, I know it's going to probably make you gain a little weight, but add the 500 calories. You're going to need it. Some herbs that actually decrease the breast milk is going to be peppermint, sage, and I heard sometimes thyme as well, parsley. Those are some um, ingredients that do decrease breast milk. Uh, I remember I'm a tea drinker. If you follow me on Instagram, shameless plug, I do, I drink tea a lot. I love tea. And I remember when my firstborn, I was drinking tea and peppermint tea was one of them. And I didn't understand why my milk just, it would go up and it would go down, it would go up and go down. And I noticed every time I would drink peppermint tea, it would put me in like, my breast milk would start drying up. So then I did some research and realized, oh, peppermint tea actually decreases breast milk. So stay away from anything peppermint tea. Read your ingredients. If anything carries peppermint in there, stay away from it while you're nursing. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, we're going to get into fluids and water. So with your fluids, um, you want to make sure that you're at least drinking at least 16 eight ounce glasses of water. Now, when I went to the hospital, I left with my hospital cup. I left with two of these for my first and my second born. Um, this is going to help you. It comes, it's going to come with the lid. It's going to come with the straw and you can, in the middle of the night when you're, you know, feeling for baby and, <laughs> and you're trying to get the baby on, you just pick this up on your nightstand and sit. Perfect. Um, now I have this water bottle now, this water bottle, I would not recommend for, for, if you're a nursing mom, I would not recommend this in the night because when it's full, Imagine carrying a newborn baby and you're juggling and twisting and this can become very cumbersome. But if you have your hospital cup with you, if you fill this up at least seven to eight times in a day, you're set. And you know that you always have your water with you. So these were my best friend. I made sure I always had this these cups with me. So if you do deliver whatever, wherever you decide to, to give birth, um, take the cups. <laughs> Okay, 
now that we kind of got into water, you're gonna know that water is your is gonna be your shadow while you're nursing. Water, 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 water. You should never be without water as a nursing mom. If you're in the car, carry a pack of 24 pack of water in your trunk. If you are at work, carry it on your desk. If you're on your bedside, carry water on your bedside. Water is going to be all around you while you're nursing. Now, water gets boring. It can, you know, for, for some. A lot of times you can do your teas, like your hot teas. You remember hot, hot soups, hot teas gets it going. So your hot teas, you can do that. Like your hot mother's milk teas, your hot lactation teas. Those are going to be really nice for you to kind of rehydrate yourself and taste something outside of water. Also, you can look into um, Gatorade. Now, Gatorade does tend to increase breast milk, but they can be kind of sugary. So you can look for the sugar-free Gatorade, but what the thing about Gatorade and why it helps is the electrolytes, right? So it's the uh, rehydrating the body. So if you can find like an electrolyte supplement that you can throw in your water, why not? You know, if not, I guess some vitamin C, something to make your water taste different, drop some, you know, drop something in there to just get, you know, taste, get your water tasting different if you're having trouble or difficulty drinking water. Um, but water is key for breastfeeding okay and you're gonna need at least about 123 ounces um, of, of water now when we get into physical activity physical activity for you as a nursing mom is going to look different for a mom that is not nursing in the sense of um, any type of rigorous activity rigorous exercise is going to make your breast milk deplete um, because you're putting your body in, it's burning calories, and if you're not able to eat enough calories at the back end to make up for everything you just burnt, your breast milk is going to, um, in return, decrease. So you do want to make sure that you're keeping your exercise. If anything, you're just doing exercise to get the body moving. You're getting exercises just to feel good, but not to really put your body in that overdrive of trying to burn calories, okay? So do be mindful whenever you are participating in exercising activities as a nursing mother, especially before your nursing, before your milk is established. That will really that will kind of get it to you. Before your milk is established, if you want to participate in rigorous activity, you're going to see your breast milk in return start to de start to decrease. All right, so let's get into clothing. For clothing, um, for clothing you do want to make sure that you have easy access to the breast at all times. Um, I did mention this in my last video. Do make sure that you have easy access to your breast at all times. That means nursing gowns, um, V-neck t-shirts, crossbody t-shirts, uh, crossbody gowns. If you, there was a time I was with my son and I had a t-shirt and I was walking around the house, I just threw it on and he was hungry. And I was like, I started rushing to feed him and put him there to the breast and the shirt was flopping over his head and it, he was wiggling around. And I just, it made me more tired than I already was. So I realized that if I'm always prepared to feed him, we're going to have a better success at that feeding. So just um, watching out for for the clothes that you're wearing around the house. Also making sure that your nursing bras and your t-shirts um, your nursing gowns are not too restrictive on the breast. So just having um, enough that it's not restricting the breast and binding it back and not letting that milk to easily get into, into the breast tissue. So do make sure that you are wearing nice fitted clothes, you know, nice loose clothes to and letting your breast have some wiggle room <laughs> okay making sure that your breast can have some type of wiggle room in it and it's not so constrictive um also let's get into the baby's clothing baby's clothing they shouldn't have too much clothes on while you want to nurse if you will notice your child if you put a lot of clothing on a newborn you're gonna see them twisting and twisting and turning and just you know not comfortable but if you just remove those clothes remove all those layers of clothes and get that baby right next to your skin get them you know nice and cushioned up on up against you and mom you can even remove some clothes too and get some nice skin to skin you're gonna notice now like more easy let down um now if you decide to pump you're not gonna have to worry too much about your your baby putting on having on too much clothes but if you do put the baby to breast 
then that's where it's gonna be easier for you if you remove a lot more clothes from the baby and let that baby feel more free and be able to feel the heat from your skin while you're nursing. Now there are some items that I do want to mention is this Haku or is it the Haku or it's like it's a basically a silicone suction cup and how I use this was when you are when you're breastfeeding on one side let's say you have the baby on one side you're going to notice that on the other side your milk starts to drop a lot of times you're going to have dripping from the other breast that's not having that doesn't have either a pump on it or have a yeah a pump on it let's leave it at that out <laughs> you know so um you what i what i did was i would put i would put the the cup on one side and then now have no baby nursing on the other side and i wouldn't suction i would just kind of keep the cup there and anything that's flowing into the cup i would now just keep it on my nightstand put it in a bag and keep it in the freezer and boop there you go and just i haven't suctioned any milk out or nothing this is just all the drops collected you would be amazed at how much milk is coming out when it's collected in this it is like what um when i learned about this i didn't i didn't use it for my first child and i lost a lot of milk but i used it on my second and i was like lifesaver i'm gonna leave the link down below but you can find this really at any store they sell baby stuff at but um basically how that is is it will collect your milk and it's oh my oh my moms do i have any moms that has breastfed that is watching this video don't leave those comment sections dry <laughs> comment in those comment sections back me up it's not a lie though you don't want to waste one ounce of breast milk whenever you are breastfeeding it is hard work to get that breast milk to come out <laughs> so the more you can save the better it is hard work it is hard work to get that milk coming so this was uh to you know to be able to save my to be able to save my milk in this really saved me a lot and i just felt like okay yeah i'm not i'm not wasting anything so that was also a um you can also use a pump so if your baby doesn't nurse on on both sides if you're you know your baby if they're only like a one side nurser and only nurse for one side and waits an hour you can be pumping while nursing on one side or you can use the cup and even suction and actually use like a hand presser while pressing on one side while the child is nursing on the other so there's so many ways to to go about it um just um just you know making sure that your milk is not being wasted and, and it can it can actually be saved for later on if stored properly another tip that i do want to give is if you do plan to pump if you're a mom that plans to go back to work try to start pumping before your child is six weeks old after around six weeks your milk starts to kind of like establish and kind of gets a rhythm going so the earlier you can pump the better and that actually is going to um kind of signal your body that baby is eating more than really what they are so you can really use the pump to your advantage and really kind of get the milk going so if you plan to maybe you just had a baby of course you're gonna have your six to eight weeks of rest depending on the type of delivery that you had so if you decide to um if you decide to after you, you know after you've healed if you want to if you decide to step out or you decide to go back to work pumping is going to be your best friend try to start pumping before six weeks if you wait to after six weeks to start pumping it's going to be kind of tough, um, but if you start, the earlier you start, the better, <laughs> the better, the more, the more you can kind of save and put aside for when you do start work back again or start any activity that's going to kind of pull you away from the house. So um, another thing is do not skip feedings. The more, like we talked about, the um, breastfeeding is supply and demand. The more you, the more your body demands, the more your body is going to supply. Now, don't don't skip feedings. You don't want to go long stretches without um, either nursing your child, pumping, or re move, removing the milk from the breast. If you start going past four hours, 
we're really it, it's going your breast milk is going to start decreasing i would recommend at least stimulating the breast and removing the milk from the breast at least every three hours it seems like a lot and it is but this is going to prevent you from losing your supply that you're working so hard to build up so don't um try not to um just or try not to go long periods of time without nursing or without pumping okay um, now when you do go back to work you, depending on where you work the restrictions are kind of going to be um kind of different from for whatever your career might be um so i'm going to have actually a separate video about working and going pump breastfeeding your child and going back to work <laughs> because going back to work i found with a lot of women that's usually the time they stop because your work environment can give you a lot of challenges when wanting to breastfeed so there's a lot of, there's key information you want to know prior to starting back work in order to continue to breastfeed your child even while going forth with your career okay so it's it's doable it's doable um but there there's ways to kind of go about that and to kind of prepare yourself a, a, a ahead of time and one of those ways is pumping and keeping some stash so when you're away from baby you um the person that's taking care of your child has enough breast milk to supply for your child while you're away so last but not least you made it to the end okay so you you stuck around thank you <laughs> So the last tip that I do want to, the last tip that I do want to give is going to be power pumping. Mm. Power what? Power pumping. Power pumping. Okay. Power pumping. Now, power pumping. What is that? What? Power pumping? Now, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of it or probably heard the term of it or probably even engaged in power pumping. That's basically where you trick your body into telling your body that your baby is going through a cluster feeding. Remember in the beginning of this video, we talked about cluster feedings. Okay, so your body's gonna think that, oh, baby's going through a growth spurt, baby's going through a growth spurt, let's make more milk. You're tricking your body. <laughs> but this is gonna boost your milk supply and it's gonna do it fast. <laughs> Literally, if you do this for day one, day two, literally by day two, you're already seeing your milk supply going up. By day three, here we go. It's, I mean, your, your milk supply is going to be skyrocketed. So don't, if you are having low breast milk or low supply, or you feel like your supply is getting low, which a lot of things can cause low supply, which we talked about peppermint. Um, another thing that can cause low supply is birth control. Um, another uh uh, you know, if you're not eating not e eating enough, if you're not getting enough calories, if you're on a certain type of birth control that is altering your hormones, or if you are um, taking peppermints or doing other sorts that are decreasing your breast milk, you're gonna see it start tanking. Now, if you are following all the tips that we talked about, and you've done it from A to Z, let's say you're you're, you're nursing your child now, and you notice, okay, Cynthia. I, I've added the 500 extra extra calories. I'm doing the 123 ounces of water. I'm doing water. I'm even doing way more than that. I'm drinking way more water. I'm drinking my mother's milk teas. I'm eating my snacks. I'm, I'm doing all of this and still yet, it's just not going right for me. My baby is latched on per, you know, perfectly. And, but still yet, I'm not getting enough excreted. And you started maybe pumping before six weeks, still yet. Try power pumping. Try it out. Try it out. It's probably more than likely going to work for you. Now, if these things do not work, do visit your lactation specialist. How do you know a baby's even getting enough milk? Like, I, I've, done, I've done all these things and I don't know if he's even getting enough. A lot of moms ask that. A lot of us worry about that. I've worried about it. But the best way you're gonna know if your child is getting enough milk is, is they, are they having enough poopy diapers? Are they having at least four or the recommended poopy diapers that your pediatrician said that they should be having a day with um, the recommended amount of wet diapers a day? If they are, your child is getting enough food. If they're gaining, a weight, gaining weight 
and in having enough poop and pee diapers your child is getting enough food so girl don't give up okay don't give up this is national um this is national breastfeeding uh month and it's my birthday month too <laughs> so you know don't don't give up don't give up don't give up there are so many resources available to you do not feel alone in your breastfeeding journey reach out reach out ask for help whether it's a friend that you know that was probably successful in their journey and you want to grab some tips from them call them it's okay Breastfeeding is natural, but it doesn't come naturally. It's funny, right? It's natural, but it doesn't come naturally, and it's okay. Get get in touch with your lactation specialist. Join a lactation group. I'm going to leave a ton of resources down below for you to get engaged in. Please, women, even if you have done your breastfeeding journey, share this with another person. There are women out there that do not know a lot of information about breastfeeding and they throw in the towel even though their heart desire was to do it but they throw in the towel because they're just like i i don't know where to where to begin with this it, it just feels foreign the whole the whole thing feels foreign and that's okay but there are resources out there for you i'm gonna leave links down below please share please like and subscribe hit the bell button in this video don't give up on your breastfeeding journey um, I'm going to supply plenty of resources for you. We are here for you. Don't give up. And I wish you the best. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>